In this episode, we are summarizing the 11th episode from Season 4 of the Wire series titled A New Day. The episode first aired on November 26, 2006. In the beginning, Naaman treats his friends Michael, Randy, and Dookie to dinner. While hanging out, they discuss how little Kevin was recently taken out, which upsets Randy. Officer Walker interrupts them, accusing them of mischief. They decide to get back at Walker for assaulting Donut. Michael suggests targeting him at a police bar. Later, despite doubts, they carry out Michael's plan. Dookie scratches Walker's car and lures him into an alley where Michael confronts him with a gun. After taking Walker's ring, they splash him with paint. Walker portrays the incident as gang warfare to other officers when in reality it was just children. But Officer McNulty doubts the story. Later on, Sherrod returns to Bubbles' garage where he confesses his debt to a drug dealer and feeling out of place working on the corner. Bubbles promises to help. The next day, they work together, finding a toppled streetlight. However, they are robbed by the same addict that has been harassing Bubbles this entire season. In another scene, Reverend Frank Reed and another minister who were recently stopped and searched by Herc meet with Mayor Carcetti to discuss introducing a civilian review board for police complaints. Carcetti acknowledges the racial implications of the incident, but urges them not to prejudge the investigation. The ministers express concerns about Commissioner Burrell's authority. Carcetti acknowledges the difficulty of the situation, as firing Herc will upset the police department, while showing leniency will upset the black political infrastructure itself. Wilson meets with Deputy Commissioner Rawls and delivers a memo from the mayor about community-based policing and effective police work. Rawls inquires about firing Commissioner Burrell, but Wilson explains they lack the necessary political support to do so, linking it to their interactions with the ministers. Rawls asks about Herc's fate, but Wilson expresses a desire not to interfere in daily department operations. Rawls suggests assigning the investigation to Daniels, emphasizing the importance of perception. He then briefs Daniels, allowing him to handle cases with discretion or refer them to a trial board. Daniels is skeptical when instructed to act ethically. Rawls presents a policy change to his commanders, facing skepticism from the parole division commander. Despite this, he insists on following the mayor's orders. Daniels later approaches Rawls to propose reconstituting the major crimes unit under his command, which Rawls approves. Deputy Commissioner Stanislas Valchek suggests that supporting Daniels is a wise move hinting that he may become the next commissioner. Valchek amusingly points out to Rawls that an African American majority in Baltimore makes it unlikely for him to ever become the commissioner. Rawls realizes Mayor Carcetti's intention to appoint an African American as commissioner, explaining the delay in firing Burrell. Burrell visits the mayor's office discussing strategy adjustments and Herc's punishment. He suggests a more severe penalty for Herc to satisfy the ministers and the police force, offering to provide a convincing reason based on Herc's past in narcotics. Burrell emphasizes his ability to align with the mayor's needs. Later, Carcetti meets department heads, hearing updates on cleanup efforts. He learns that the school system itself in Baltimore is currently running while being underfunded by $54 million, which leaves him shocked. As we catch up with Prez during a lesson on measurements, he assists Charlene and Jasmine with dividing an odd number, but faces disruptions. Randy faces hostility from peers during his lunchtime sales pitch as the rumors continue to spread of him being a police informant. In the Corner Kids class, Miss Duquette discusses courage seeking examples unrelated to the streets. When no one responds, she initiates a trust fall exercise. Naaman reluctantly participates after encouragement from Colvin. Albert initially declines and later reacts angrily, revealing he found his mother dead at home. Colvin and the social worker, Miss Renard, approach Albert to inquire about his well-being. Naaman recounts the incident with Officer Walker to Colvin, who praises his progress and suggests a return to regular classes soon. After school, Randy is attacked by classmates, with Michael standing by him despite the accusations. Dookie runs for help, and Prez intervenes, bringing them to his classroom. Naaman questions Michael's actions and refusal to apologize. The next day, Naaman considers changing his appearance, but decides against it. He also interacts with Kennard, 
and assists Michael's mother with a handout. Later on, Prez confronts Sergeant Carver for endangering Randy, but Carver promises to protect Randy and investigate the situation himself. Assistant Principal Donnelly announces eighth graders, including Dookie and Monell, will advance to high school, leaving Dookie disheartened. Donnelly later informs Colvin that the special class program is ending. Colvin, Parenti, and Donnelly meet with Miss Shepherdson and her supervisor, advocating for the program, but they are informed that City Hall approval will now be required due to new rules. As we catch up with Omar, he is tracking down Slim Charles. They follow him to a meeting with Proposition Joe, surprising Omar. Later, Omar attends a meeting with the New Day co-op where he observes Marlo and Fat Face Rick. Omar confronts Joe at his regular repair store, demanding his cooperation in stealing from Marlo and threatens Proposition Joe by telling him that he will tell Marlo about the card game robbery he set up for him. In a follow-up meeting, Marlo Stanfield praises Chris Parlo and Snoop for their work. Snoop confirms they dealt with Michaels' stepfather. Marlo learns Michael supported Randy when accused of being an informant, disturbing Chris. As Lester Freeman packs his desk, Bunk Moreland and Kima Greggs joke with him about returning to major crimes. Carver arrives and asks Bunk about Randy. Bunk reveals Herc's failure to pass Randy to him, realizing Herc's responsibility. Bunk and Freeman confront Herc about Randy, unsatisfied with his response. Freeman questions Herc about his actions, learning about his encounter with Chris and Snoop and the discovery of their nail gun during a traffic stop. Bunk and Freeman visit Prez at the school where they discuss their unsuccessful attempt to talk to Randy. Bunk accuses Prez of siding with criminals, but Prez defends himself, saying he is protecting his students. Freeman remains diplomatic and bids Prez farewell. Bunk asks Prez for some information, and Prez shares Randy's account of directing Lex to meet a girl at the playground. Later on, Bunk and Freeman search the playground and notice sealed vacant houses. Freeman identifies one with newer nails and suggests they need a crowbar to investigate further. He theorizes that Lex may be inside, calling the house a potential tomb. That was episode number 48, titled A New Day. To watch the next or previous episode summary, click on the link in the description or at the end of this video. If you made it to the end of this video, remember that I am summarizing this entire series, as well as other popular works of culture, like literature, movies, and TV shows. I have the playlists of our summaries in the description. Also, if you found the video valuable, share it with a friend and click like so that YouTube can recommend it to others like you. The best way to support this channel is by becoming a Patreon supporter or by buying us a coffee. You will find those links in the description as well. Doing this helps our channel out tremendously. I really thank you for your support.